power does not travel in words. But power is the result of relationship. The power comes after the result of the relationship you experience with the Holy Spirit. And there's a seek of power intimacy. Jesus had that incredible experience with his Father that gave him the ability to be able to fulfill the will of his Father. We've come so far, but now there remains incredible spiritual strongholds that can only be penetrated by the supernatural. We have got to rise up to a higher level of strategic spiritual warfare that will demolish the last stronghold of Satan in this last hour, we are going to have to have a supernatural manifestation. The power will only come after we have an experience with the Holy Ghost. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. What I'm going to put in your mouth, you're going to root out. You're going to tear down. You're going to pull down. Don't you dare try until you get my word in your mouth. They filled Jesus with his humanity, with the Holy Ghost. And that's why you and I have got to have the same Holy Ghost if we're going to do the same work. There's a family waiting for you to witness. There's a church there that's dead, that's waiting for somebody with resurrection life and resurrection power, with the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to Miracle Monday on Live from Legacy. My name is Greg Morrow. On behalf of Morris and Teresa Cirillo, who are celebrating almost 70 years of incredible marriage, 75 years of incredible world-shaking ministry, standing today in front of our beautiful Legacy Hotel, Resort, and Spa on the campus of the Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center. There is lots of activity taking place. The hotel is just a few days away from opening, and there is a key and a room with your name on it. Right now on the screen, you're seeing the website, the phone number. You can call, visit the website, make your reservation, get the information that you need. This is one of the most beautiful centers I have ever seen anywhere in the world. Jerusalem stone all over the campus. The beautiful hotel. Right now you're seeing the spa. What an incredible place just to come, get refreshed. The pool, one of the most beautiful lobbies, warm, welcoming, loving staff. One of my favorite places in this hotel. You don't get to be this size without loving Teresa's prime Italian steakhouse. We just can't wait for you to come and experience legacy. The doors are opening. The presence of God is on this campus. We are so privileged today to take the ministry that God has graced Dr. Mara Cirillo with for over seven decades and bring it to you every day, live on this great, Facebook page. I'll tell you why it's great. 
because you're on it today. I want to congratulate you today. You're not just a spectator, but you're going to receive something today. We're taking you to Earl's Court in London, England. God used Dr. Cirillo to make spiritual history in the nation of Great Britain. And today we're taking you in to one of the most powerful messages that I have ever heard. I tell you today, strongholds are gonna be broken. Barriers are going to be broken. Doors that have been closed are going to open. Brother Cirillo is bringing the incredible revelation of how to win the battle for life. Samson faced an incredible battle. Everyone on this Facebook page today, you have something that you need God to help you overcome. I'm excited today. You get ready. Your life, your family, your ministry, your mind, your spirit will never be the same again. Would you join me in welcoming as he comes under the anointing of God, God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. I want us to turn tonight to the book of Romans. Sixth chapter, I'm going to read two verses of scripture. I want to thank the ushers for assisting all over this overflow crowd tonight, please. Romans 6, 13. Neither yield ye your members. Speaking about your body as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves as unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. I'd like to read the 16th verse. Holy Spirit. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Tonight I want to talk to you in this building, in this family service, about a battle called life. About a mystery Hold our will. Romans six thirteen. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves 
unto God and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Every man and every woman, every young person, every boy and every girl in this auditorium tonight and outside this building is in this incredible battle of life. No one escapes it. Man lives in two worlds, beloved. We live in a natural world, and then we live in a spirit world. These two worlds are governed by, will you shut the organ off for me tonight? Are governed by law. The natural world is governed by natural laws. Now, it's a strange thing, beloved. You do not have to believe in those laws. But the strange thing about it is this. If you break those natural laws, whether you believe in them or not, you pay the price. Has nothing to do with your faith whatsoever. You say, Brother Shiloh, give me an example. The law of gravity. Can you imagine me coming up here on this platform and telling you I do not believe in the law of gravity and I jump off this stage or I jump off the Earl's Court? How many of you know it's not going to make any difference whether I believe in the law of gravity or not? If I jump off the Earl's Court building, you're going to pick up a bloody mess. These laws, natural laws of God, they cannot be violated. Example, the law of self-preservation. How many of you know you have to eat to live? I know some people live to eat, but that's not what I'm talking about. How many of you know you can fast one day, but watch out if you start going 10 days or 20 days or 30 days or 40 days? You have to eat to live. It's a natural law. If you don't do it, you're like all those people who are suffering with famine. They will die, and so will you die. Doesn't make any difference whether you believe it or not. Just don't eat and find out what happens. Now that's in the natural world, but over here in the spirit world, Man lives not only in the natural world, but he lives also in the spirit world. Over here in the spirit world, 
there are spiritual laws given by God. You don't have to believe in those laws. All you have to do is break them. Like the law of gravity, break it, you'll pay the price. What law are you talking about, Brother Sterling? I'm talking about the sin law of God. You don't have to believe in sin makes no difference whether you do or not. The Bible says the wages of sin are death. You break the sin law of God, and my friend, you will die. Has nothing to do with whether you believe or not. Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Now there's a mystery in connection with this battle. It's called the mystery of our will. I want every young person in this building to listen very deeply tonight. God never forces man to do anything. When he created us, the Bible says we were created in his image. Look at Mars. Do you think I look like God? Do you think God has my eyes? Do you think God has my ears? How many of you think he has my high cheekbones? How many of you think Morris looks like God? Not one hand. You're a smart crowd. Where is the image of God? It's not in your physical features. The image of God is in your spirit. Everybody say spirit. spirit. God created us in his own image and in our spirit. What did he do? He put a godlike characteristic in us. He didn't put any strings on us. He didn't make us puppets. He gave us what is called our free moral will. He gave us the ability to choose whether we will serve him, to choose whether we will obey him. Listen to what Romans 6, 13 says, neither yield ye your members. The mystery of our will God doesn't domineer us. Gave us a free will to choose whether we will yield our members to sin, to unrighteousness, or whether we will yield them in righteousness unto God. He gave us that choice, the power of our will. He gave it to us. God doesn't rule it. The only time God rules your will is when you come to Christ. And when you surrender your life to him. That's what salvation and the miracle of salvation is all about. You and I getting off of the throne of our life and saying, Jesus, I surrender to you. You come and you live and you rule and you reign and you dictate. (laughs) 
Somebody came to me one time and said to me, Morris, you know why I did what I did? They said, the devil made me do it. I said, what? We used to have a TV program in the United States of America. It was quite a satire type of a program. It was built around this black comedian. He would always come on out and act a little part of the church out on television. And he would always end up saying, the devil made me do it. Now I've got news for you in this building. The devil can't make you do anything. The mystery of our will, he can come and influence. He can come and tempt you. But the only way you will commit sin, the reason why you take drugs is because you want to take drugs. reason why you do the things that you do is not because the devil has got some grip on you. He may now, but it didn't start out that way. You began to dabble. You began to yield. You began to take your members and just play a little bit with sin play a little bit with immorality, play a little bit with homosexuality. And then as you yield your members, the body says, then all of a sudden, what happens? You become slaves. You didn't become a tobacco addict. You yielded yourself to that nicotine. And then all of a sudden, it had a hold on you. You became its slave. The same with alcohol. You didn't become an alcoholic like that. Took a little bit of alcohol. Then a little bit more. And then before you knew it, it had a hold on you where you could not get free from it because you kept yielding your members to it and now you became a slave. There are two forces in this world, not 25, not 12, not 10, just two. One is good, the other is evil. One is God, the other is the devil. I pray for you tonight. I pray for your family. I pray for husbands, I pray for wives, I pray for young teenagers and children in this building tonight. We're all caught up in this battle of life. And it's between two potentials. One, Every man and every woman, every boy and every girl in this building hear me tonight. God Almighty has a plan for your life. But the devil being the counterfeit that he is, Bible says the devil is a thief. Everybody say thief. thief. Bible says the devil is a 
murderer. Everybody say murder. Bible says the devil is a liar. Everybody say liar. liar. This liar, this murderer, this robber, this thief also has a plan for your life. His purpose is to get you to believe that God doesn't mean what he says. Religion is old fashioned. The cross and the blood of Jesus is meaningless. How can the blood of a man forgive my sins? There's a story that I want to share a few moments with you about tonight before we begin to pray in this building. It's about a man in the Bible who is the greatest example to us of the struggles that we all go through. And let me tell you, there's not a person in this building, including Morris, that is exempt from the struggles of the battle of life. Not one person is exempt. story is found in the book of Judges, 16th chapter. This man's name, we won't turn to it, but his name was Samson. I want you to watch this. Samson was called by God and Samson's life had a purpose and a spiritual destiny. God had a plan for his life. But the battle was on. What was it between the two forces? Good, evil, God, the devil. You recognize this battle? How many of you raise your hand to me and say, Brother Srilo, I know exactly what you're talking about because I have felt this battle and this struggle in my own life. Let me see your hand, wave it at me. God had a purpose for Samson. He was a judge. He judged Israel for 20 years. He was to sit upon the throne. He was to be a man of God. He was to be an example. He was to be a leader. Samson had a weak. not a person in this building that does not have some kind of a weakness. And I'm going to tell you today, it's strange, but it's true. The devil is not going to play to your strength. He knows what your weakness is. And he's going to play to your weakness. <laughs> Samson's weakness was immorality. He went and laid with strange women, even though he was a judge. Even though he was supposed to so-called be the leader, he ran and he laid with strange women and committed adultery. You know, there's something marvelous about God. 
He doesn't punish you the first time. There's something marvelous about God. He doesn't even come and judge you many times the first time you do wrong. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin and only God knows how much sin in this building has been covered by the love and the mercy and the grace of God. You keep yielding your members. You keep yielding your life. You keep walking in unrighteousness. And as sure as I am standing here, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And it is written, that God will not always continue to cover up your sin. One day, Samson, who had this great potential to be the person God wanted him to be, fulfill the plan of God. Think about it. The great, awesome potential that you have tonight of being the person God wants you to be. Think of that awesome potential. And then in that struggle and then in that battle to fail. He went down through a valley, saw a beautiful woman by the name of Delilah. And he said, I just got to have that woman. And he went, befriended that woman, and began to sleep with her, commit adultery. One day the Philistines, who was the enemy of Samson, and the enemy of Israel, because you see, Samson had unusual power with God, picked up the gates of a city, tore lions with his bare hands, took a jawbone of an ass, and slew a thousand Philistines. God performed supernatural miracles for Samson. Out of the jawbone of that ass that slew a thousand Philistines, God gave him water to drink to preserve his life. Think about it. The potential that God had in this man and what his plan was for his life. Philistines had become his enemy, went to Delilah and convinced her to try to find out where does this man Samson get this unusual strength that with the jawbone of an ass he could kill a thousand and how he could tear lions apart. He's got something, some secret. Tell us. Get it for us, and we'll give you 1,000 pieces of silver. While he was laying with her one night, she asked him, where do you get this strength? If you love me, Samson, you'll tell me. Somebody say the devil's a liar. Samson said, I'll tell you, Delilah, 
if you take seven green wreaths that were never dried and bind me, I'll be as weak as any other man. She did it, and she called for the Philistines. Samson rose up and tore those like they were little pieces of thread. She began to work on them a little bit more. Now this is what happens when you yield your life to sin. You get further away from God, and further away from God, and further away from God, until, let me tell you something tonight, there isn't anything you will not stoop to do once you become a slave by yielding, taking the control, taking your will, giving it over to the work of the devil in your home, in your family relationship, between husband and wife, between son and daughter, between mother and father, between mother and son and daughter, between father and son and daughter. Eventually, there are no depths to which you will not go once sin gets a hold and you yield your members to sin. There's a lot of people in this building tonight in just a moment going to see themselves like this man. He said, all right, Delilah, I fooled you one time. I'm not going to fool you again. Tell you what you do. If you take new ropes, you bind me fast with these, I'll be as weak as any other man. Same thing happened. Philistines came, he tore them apart. Now she really got to working on it. And he said, all right, Delilah, because she said, Samson, if you don't tell me, I'm going to send you out of my house. You see how many times God gives us the chance to break with sin? and with unrighteousness. He said, if you take the seven locks of my head, weave them together, I'll be as weak as any other man. That still wasn't where the secret of his strength lied. When she woke him up, he stood up, bedpost came up. Now she said, all right, Samson, you've lied to me three times. We're through, we're finished. I'm not gonna be your lover anymore. And Samson said, I can't do without you, Delilah. Now look at this man. The one who picked up a jawbone of an ass and slew a thousand mighty men in a battle. Look at him. This is what sin does to us. He said, I can't live without you, Delilah. I'll tell you what. I have been a Nazarite from my mother's womb. There has never been a razor that has touched my head. If you shave my hair, I'll be as weak as any other man. She said, now I got it. She knew it. She got the Philistines, put them in a special place, put
put Samson to sleep in her lap, took the razor and shaved his head and shouted, the Philistines be upon thee. And Samson arose, the Bible says, as he did before on the other occasions. And he reached up into the air. Can you see this man? Oh my God. This judge of Israel, can you see him? This man that had the biggest potential in his life under God. Look at him. The Bible says he's grasping in the air and the Philistines are coming and they're taking him. And the Bible said he wished not, but the Spirit of God departed from him. I want to read you one little scripture before I pray. Twenty-first verse, Judges 16, listen to it. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. First thing they did to Samson was blind him. People in Earl's court tonight, listen to me. There's not one person in this building that got here by accident tonight. The Holy Spirit brought you into this building tonight so that you can win the battle of life before you walk out of this building. Sin blind. Oh, it promises you a lot of glitter. Fame, fortune, bright lights, pleasure. But people hear me tonight. The consequence of yielding your members over which only you have the control given to you by God, put in you as the image of God. Sin. When you let it have its way, then you walk around like a person stumbling. <laughs> Please don't put this on. Walk around like a person stumbling in darkness. You don't know where you're going. They put out his eyes. Sin. Blind. Second, let's continue to read that scripture. They brought him down to Gaza and they bound him with fetters of brass. Look at him. He's blinded. Now he's bound. You recognize this? You that have walked down this road, sin blinds, and then it binds you. It binds you. you. Try to get free from it. I'd like to have a dollar bill for every person that's ever come to me 
and said to me, Morris, I'm talking about outside of God. I'd like to be free from this habit. I'd like to be free from that habit. I'd like this thing to be broken from my life. Sin binds. It changes you. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey his servants, you are? You become bound. They bound him with fetters of brass. And lastly, listen to this. He did grind. in the prison house. Can you see him? Where is he, Mars? He's down there in the dungeon. The soldier is whipping him. He is blind. He is bound. And he's pushing this wheel. He has plenty of time to think now, doesn't he? What's he thinking about? If only I didn't disobey God. If only I had done what God asked me to do. If only I didn't yield. disobedience. He's thinking about his mother. He's thinking about his father. Because let me tell you something, beloved. When you sin, you don't sin to yourself. No one does. Everything you do affects somebody else. And it affects those that you love very deeply and very dearly. It affects them. Samson's mother and father are crying, where's my son? Where's this man who was to sit upon the throne and judge the nation? Where is he? He's grinding. He's grinding. He's grinding. Sin grinds. It never lets you alone. It's a torment. It's not satisfied to just blind you. It's not satisfied to just bind you. But when you yield your life to it, it'll grind on you and grind on you and grind on you. That story has a sad ending. 
Samson died in the Philistines' camp. But thank God in the last moment, he looked up to God and he repented of his sins. And he asked God to forgive him of his sins. And in his last moment of life, God forgave him of all his sins. And God restored to him his strength and his power because he asked for forgiveness. There's an anointing in this building. Power of the Holy Spirit is here. In a few moments, we're going to come against every power of the enemy in this building. God has a potential for your life. devil wants that destroyed. There's an anointing in this building for God to heal families. Husbands that have been disloyal to your wife and to your children. There's an anointing in this building tonight to deliver you and set you free and by the power and the authority that God has put within me we're going to break every chain of the enemy over your life tonight and God is going to heal your family There's an anointing in this building tonight. When you are willing tonight to obey the Spirit of God and turn and yield your life to God every member of your body to God. There's an anointing in this building tonight to heal your mind. There are thousands of you, the Holy Spirit is showing me right now, thousands of you in this building that are living in the past. You're under guilt, you're under condemnation for Things that you have done that no one knows about. You haven't told anybody about them. But you don't have to tell anybody about them. God knows them. And tonight, he is going to take the power of guilt. And he is going to break it and destroy it. And there will be no condemnation from this day forward. all over this building tonight in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray. A prayer for mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, young people, teenagers. You say to me, Brother Shula, I want to win the battle of life. I want God's full potential in my life. I will from this day forward know that God has given to me his power and his authority. I will not yield my members 
of my body, my mind, my physical body, my appetites. I will not yield them to the works of the enemy, but I will yield them as instruments unto God for his righteousness to flow inside me. The devil's power is going to be broken tonight. I'm not going to ask you to bow your heads. I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes. It's like liquid fire flowing over me, over this building tonight. The warmth of the presence of Almighty God is here. I'm going to pray. We're going to find out tonight who has greater power, the resurrected Son of Jesus Christ or the devil. Say to me, Brother Shiloh, I want to repent of every sin in my life. You say to me tonight, Brother Shiloh, I want to win the battle of life. Remember, it's that want to, that will, that you're going to surrender to God tonight. When you surrender it to him, then he's going to take control of it. And you watch the victory and the power that's going to come into your life as a result of your surrendering that will to him. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, teenagers. This is God's night to do what, Brother Cyril? To set your soul free. Every mind is going to be set free that will surrender to God tonight. Is yours. Can't go one step further. I've got to pray. In Jesus' name. You say, Brother Shula, I want you to pray for me. I want to win the battle of life. I want to surrender my life to God tonight. In the name of Jesus, I want the victory. I want the power of a changed life tonight. In Jesus' name, you want me to pray for you? Take your right hand. You want me to pray that the chains will break? You want me to pray that the mind will be healed? In the name of Jesus, take your right hand and quickly, please, put it right up in the air. Jesus, you're going to break every fetter. You're going to break every fetter. You're going to break every fetter. And you're going to set men and women free. Those of you that have your hands raised, this is going to be an awesome mass miracle of the power of God. Young people, listen to me. Keep your hands up. There are hundreds of you who have once made decisions for God in your life and you've made decisions for Jesus Christ, but you have been dabbling in things yielding yourself to things that you ought not to be doing. And it will mean your destruction. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your chance to tell God, I want rid of them. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Others, I'm going to wait. There are thousands with your hands raised, but there are several others. Put your hand up. You've got five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Get it up. My brother, my sister, I know that God has been speaking to you through this incredible message. We are about to go back to Earl's Court.
Brother Cirillo is going to pray the miracle prayer over your life, over your family. I want to encourage you, because God is a spirit, the same anointing that was present as Morris Cirillo prayed this prayer some years ago in London, England, I declare to you that anointing is right by your side. I want you to do something. Maybe put your hand towards your device, put it towards your computer, or just raise it in the presence of God. I want you to join these tens of thousands in Earl's Court that are surrendering their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, to the power of the Holy Spirit. As we reconnect now, I want you to make this your prayer. We'll be back with you in just a few moments. In Jesus' name. Stretch your hands out. Say, Father, Father I, thank you. I thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. for the healing of my family, my family. for healing for healing my soul, my soul. For, healing for healing me, me. All, my sins are forgiven. all my sins are forgiven old things have passed away old things have passed away i have no more guilt I have, no I have no more condemnation. I have no more condemnation. I am healed. I am healed. I am free. I am free. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. There is no habit of Satan that I have yielded myself to. I have yielded myself to. That has any more dominion. Or control, or control over me. Over me. They are broken. They are broken. Nah. nah. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Listen. Well, honey, what a power and yes, presence of God yes. in that altar at Earl's Court where thousands are surrendering their families, their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I tell you what, that same anointing yes. that was in Earl's Court, that was upon yes, Brother Cyril, yes. it may even be greater right here at Praise the Legacy God. Center. And honey, I want us to agree in prayer and just add our prayers. There are so many needs that have been showing up in the comments section from so many nations of the world, families that are in crisis, financial needs, ministry needs. And I believe that we serve a God that is an ever-present help in our time of trouble. Amen. 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 Well, God promises that mm. when we ask anything, anything according to His will, wow. He hears us and he will answer and give us our desires. And we know that it is God's will. It is God's will for your family to be 100% healed, 100% restored, 100% whole. My God. So reach out in faith as we lift up our prayer to the Lord. God, we thank yes. you. God, we thank you that you are for us, that yes. you are not against God. us, but you are for us and our family. God, we know that it is the enemy that would come against to divide, to separate, yes. to steal everything from our family. So in the mighty name of Jesus, yes. the mighty all powerful Lord, name of Jesus, name. we bind and rebuke every yes. wicked demonic force of the enemy. We bind and rebuke Satan. Mm. We bind and rebuke any anger, mm. or unforgiveness, any spirit of rebellion, mm. generational bondages. We bind it and command it to go in Jesus name. Satan, you will yes. obey the word of the My resurrected God. Lord who said, I give you power and authority authority over all the power of the enemy. Devil, you are under our feet yes. in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. Yes. God, I thank you that it is your will for these Hallelujah. families to be 100% whole yes. and restored. God, I thank you that your love, your healing, 
Your forgiveness is flowing into each and every family right now. We thank you for your word, God, that says love covers a multitude of yes. sins, that love is kind, that it never gives up. Yes. And we thank you, Lord thank God, you, for Lord. doing a mighty work in each family. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. My God, honey, I tell you what, I feel such a power and presence of God. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me while you were praying and said to tell you a few things. Number one, as Brother Cirillo released that word from God today, I want you to know chains have been broken yes. off yes. of your life. Amen. There are things that have controlled you and that have kept you from everything that God has for your life. And the Lord is wanting you to know something because it's the anointing. Yes. that destroys the yoke. Yes, amen. You know what, it's not going to Bible school, thank God for Bible school, thank God for great books, but I tell you what, a moment in the presence of God will change yes. your life forever. A new beginning. And I believe that today. I want you to know something, my brother. I want you to know something, my sister. That voice of the accuser, that thing that the enemy has tried to beat you down with, I want you to know it is broken off of your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, take this Facebook Live today, this message from Brother Cirillo, and I want to encourage you, put it on your Facebook page, share it with your family, share it with somebody that is in a battle over their life. Put somebody's name in the comment section that needs to watch and needs to receive this message. And I want to encourage you, this week and this week alone, you can get your download copy of the Miracle Book absolutely free. You'll receive it and all the information on Legacy. If you'll just go to the link, you'll get our Legacy magazine. It'll download right into your email. You'll get the Miracle Book, the five most important things that God ever spoke to Brother Srillo uh, that will release a rhythm of miracles in your life. I want to encourage you, take advantage. That's all I can tell you. God is a rewarder of those who do something, who diligently seek Him. Take an extra minute today, get to that link, download your copy, and let the anointing of God and this ministry be downloaded into your life. You'll never be the same again. And then my God, I can't wait, honey, in just a few days, Legacy will be open. The hotel will be open. There's a number on the screen right now. You can call that number. You can go to that website, make your reservation, get more information about Legacy. You can visit the Legacy Center, Legacy, resortandspa.com, the center at legacy.com. Go to both of those websites. You'll get a virtual tour of the Legacy Center. You'll get a virtual tour of the hotel. Honey, I got our room key. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's Father's Day weekend, and I've got a room key at the Legacy Hotel. We can't wait to see you here at Legacy. We can't wait to see many of you in Orlando. Don't miss it, the Worldwide yes. School of Ministry, September 4th to the 7th, and we'll be back here at the Legacy Center for an unbelievable week. Yes, yes. Brother Solo is so excited about it. Our team is excited about it. We will have a Feast of Tabernacles at the Legacy Center, October 4th tonight during the week, the seven-day Feast of Tabernacles. We will have a feast. We will have a celebration here at Legacy. And then the great grand opening, Joel Osteen will be here. So many others will be here who love and honor Morris and Teresa Cirillo. We'll be giving you more information about that in the days and the weeks to come, but that'll be during the first week of January right here in San Diego. Honey, I'm excited tomorrow. We're going back to Earl's Court. You know what, I was a little bit younger in those days. Yes. But I tell you what, there is a greater yes. power in my life yes. and there is a, a greater blessing yes. in my life. Yes. And I believe that same thing is happening to you. Do not miss a day. We've got some surprises for you this week. So don't miss a day of Live from Legacy. Morris and Teresa love you so much. Honey, prayer ministers, 
are ready. They've been praying all day just for the opportunity to pray with you. The number's on the screen, 1-866-756-4200. Miracles happen when someone cares. These prayer we ministers care, care. Yes. and we care. Morris and Teresa cares. To Don't forget to get your copy of the Miracle Book. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, remember this, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We'll see you tomorrow on Live from Legacy with Morris and Teresa Cirillo in Jesus' name. God bless you.